Well, good day and welcome. What we're trying to achieve is a sense of understanding how wealth happens and how wealth works. This week we're going to talk business and if business is easier than you think, it's because there is actually a methodology of business. There is actually a methodology by which or a recipe of which you can, uh, I guess, answer, you know, follow the system. I guess that's really the simplest way that I can put it. And so when I start working on uh, the, the whole concept, and I think it was uh, when I wrote the book, The Business Coach, the business coach went and took us from uh, understanding what business was to really seeing what business could be if we followed the recipe, if we followed the methodologies of business. The formulaic approach to business, the recipe of business and the recipe of success. Well, let's first of all start with the recipe of success overall and then apply that to business. So if you take a look at uh, the whole idea of business being a part of life or business being a part of success, business doesn't get away from the lessons or the rules of success. The rules of success in sport, the rules of success in life, the rules of success in uh, wealth, those rules of success are the same no matter where we're at. So make sure that we understand that's what we're trying to achieve. The formula for life success, uh, you've probably heard me teach this to you before, and the formula for life success is relatively simple. We start out with the idea of dreams. And that's no different to business. Business has to have a vision. Business has to have its own dream. So what is your dream for the business is a question that we, we want to always be asking out there into the marketplace. So your dreams uh, in life have to be the starting point of your success, the same as a vision in business is going to be the starting point of your success in business. So what is the vision for your business? Start think of it that way. The second stage of the formula is dreams times goals. When your dreams become into goals, and the same again for business, if business has a vision, then it has to have goals. You know, in life, you wanna have goals that are you know, three to five years out. You wanna have goals that are a year away. You wanna have goals that are 90 days away. You wanna have goals every single day. And the truth is that's the way business should be run as well. So. If we get to the formula for success, then that's what it's going to be. The next part of that formulaic approach, so if you go dream goals, then it comes down to uh, the learning. So once you've defined that set of goals, once you've defined for your business that these are the goals that we want to have, this is what it is that we want to achieve, then what we have to actually do is say, well, okay, if we want to achieve X, then we need to learn why. It, it, it's too easy for us to sit back and say, okay, I want to achieve X and just then write a plan for it. No, if you want to achieve anything in life, there is the learning phase. And that learning phase is not one that we can skip over. So if, if I want to double my business, I have to read a bunch of books on how to double my business. If I want to get better at sales, I need to read a bunch of books on sales. Uh, no matter what it is I want to do, I've got to actually study that subject. And, there's, and that's why the building of a business owner, the building of a business person, the building of an entrepreneur is really the starting point of the formula for business success. It's The formula starts with you getting better at business. The formula starts with your learning and your capacity because what, what I do and what you do, what we all do, is we build the business that we know how to build. And if we don't know better, we don't build a better business. If we don't know better, and the same with your staff, if you know the, the dream, goal, learn, the learn is also for them as well. If they're not learning, then how are they going to build a better business for you? So if, if you are learning and your team is learning, then your business can grow. If you're not learning and your team isn't learning, then your business can't grow. It's, it's a relatively simple thing. The, the growth of thinking, um, I, I think probably the, the, the toughest way to say this to someone is your business grows to your level of incompetence. If, there's, if you're not growing, it, it's very hard for your business to grow past you, let's put it that way. You know, as the owner's level of competence gets to a certain point, then the business's level of competence get to that same level or that same certain point. We, we must, as uh, business people, recognise this fact and keep uh, moving it through from that way. 
So the next thing that we have to do then is understand that once we've done the learning, then we then we write the plan. And you know, it's one one of the biggest things in any business owner's career is moving from planning in your head to planning on paper, moving uh, moving from that whole idea of yep, I've got it all in my head to now hang on. If I'm going to build a team of people, then we need an actual written plan because unless people can all see what's in the plan, then it's very hard uh, to, uh, I guess it's very hard to make sure that, um, well, how do I put this politely? I don't think there is a way to put this politely other than if, if you're not uh, willing to document the plan, if you're not willing to put the plan down, then how how is it that the plan is ever going to be something that gets uh, created and, and and the results come from so that documentation of a plan requires three things to happen number one it requires the learning that we just discussed number two the documentation of the plan requires actual thinking it's like when i write a book the the writing of the book actually makes me consciously think about how do i actually do this it's like a chef writing a recipe. They actually have to think through, oh, what do I actually put in there? How do I actually go through that process? And that's why the writing of a plan uh, makes us uh, get to that point of thinking about what we do uh, to such a degree. So it's, it's important to make sure that we do that. So the dream, goal, learn plan is applicable to all areas of life, but it is definitely applicable in, in our business. And if business is going to be easier than we think, then business has to actually be done in a way that makes it easier than you think. But that that stage of growth, like I just bought a company or I bought out my partner in a company and the CEO of that company is used, used to uh, reporting to the business partner. And when I sat down with her and I, I walked through and I said, listen, what we have to do here is we have to do the full evaluation of where we're at and then we'll write the plan to get to where we want to be. But until we've evaluated where we're at and we haven't then put down the goals, it's, it's that phase of thinking that, you know, you've got to know where we're at, where do we want to be, and that's our goals. Great, so we've got the vision for the company, we've got the goals of the company. Now we've got to do the learning so that we can write the plan. And in that particular case, there's not a lot of learning needed to be done because I've already done it multiple times before, but there'll be learning needed by the team in the organisation, not, not so much by me. So that's an important aspect to think about uh, what it is that we're building up there. So take that into account, dream, goal, learn, plan, and then we take action based on the plan. Now that formulaic approach to... I guess life and business makes us really think through uh, where are we working towards it. And that's where, you know, one of the first things I do in coaching someone is take a look at giving themselves a score, like where are we at and where do we want to get to? So if you look at your dreams for your business, your vision of where you want the business to go, most people when they first start out don't have clarity of what they want their business to look like. So it's, there's a lack of clarity around what it is so it's hard to create something when, when that's the case. Stephen Covey said it very clearly in, in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, start with the end in mind. Michael Gerber said it very clearly in uh, his book, The e -Myth, that you have to, you know, the business is the product, so know what you're building and then go to work and work on it, not in it, to create that business. So there is a very clear structure for us to work towards to get those results uh, that, that make that business, uh, that make us work on it, not in it. So let's, let's fundamentally understand that the idea of business being easy is not that business is uh, not hard work, but it's easier than a lot of people make it because they don't know what they're doing, therefore they do a lot of trial and error, and therefore they end up with the results. So, yeah. That's, that's a big part of, of our lessons. My challenge to a lot of people is that they make business harder because they're unwilling to learn the recipe. You know, if you wanted to you know, take up running marathons, for example, you would go and learn how to run a marathon. The challenge with business is people get into business and they're not willing to learn the next phase. When we, when we sit back and we learn the formulaic methodology of business, what we actually learn is that 
it's not that hard when we understand it. It's like, you know, if you were given a set of Lego and all you did with that set of Lego was not read the instruction book, it's very, very difficult to build a set of Lego without an instruction book. You know, and it's much more difficult to run a business without an instruction book. And that's why, you know, my 30x business, 30x life and 30x wealth, all of these programs are designed to make it very simple for everyone uh, to do that. If you want business to be easier, learn the formulaic approach. Climbing a ladder is easy if you take it one rung at a time. Climbing a ladder is hard if you try and jump straight to the top of the ladder. And that, my friends, is where we see a lot of challenge for a lot of people. The formulaic approach really takes us through six stages of building a business. So I'll, I'll show it to you, the old, old version of, of this book. So what we did with that, and that just goes to show from 2004 to 2021 is, you know, that's, that's what we've been teaching. So it's very, very um, uh, simplistic in the fact that what we try and do with everything is break it down to that. So to make business easier for you and to make business something that makes it, uh, t removes the complexities, that's the whole idea of what we're trying to do. So the mastery segment is broken down into four areas so that you can work on each of the four areas and therefore complete the mastery segment. Then the marketing segment is broken into five areas, thus giving you uh, the five different areas to work on and complete. The uh, next level where we build in the systemization is broken into nine stages, and so you can build the nine stages. The next level of team is built into six key steps to that one. And then the synergy is created into five uh, disciplines that create the synergy level. So if you take a look at business being easier than you think, it's not that it's not the level of work that you think, it's just that it's different work than what most people are doing. It's a different stage, it's a different way of thinking, or it's a different approach to it. And so it's really giving you that structured approach to building a business. And that's why 30X Business does take 30 days to go through all of those different levels uh, and, and take you through each and every one of the stages to it. The journey of business and the journey of life and the journey of wealth gets easier if you have friends on the journey with you, on that learning journey. So if we, the first question came in about marketing and it was like, well, okay, Brad, yeah, business is easy, I think, but right now getting new customers is becoming a challenge. How do I go about getting new customers and get my marketing to start working? And my first reply to that is, well, the, the best new customer is one of your existing customers. So take a look at the amount of marketing you're doing to your existing customer base first and foremost. I see too many people on the track of new customer, new customer, new customer, rather than finishing out doing more business with existing customers. Majority of businesses that I look at, they're leaving 20 to 30 percent more revenue on the table by not doing good extra business with their existing customer base. If you look at your existing customer base, and uh, this is the, this, the number one line I hear from existing customers in most businesses is one of these lines, oh, I didn't know you did that or I didn't know you sold those. You know, so they don't even know what is being sold. They don't even know what is being done out there in the marketplace. And so a lot of the times we're not seeing the results because we're not seeing people actually do that working back with the customer base. They're not educating the customer base as to uh, what it is that they do. They're not educating the customer base to what else they sell. And, and by not educating the customer base, it makes it very hard uh, to do the things that, that you know we want to do out there in the marketplace. So when you take a look at getting new customers in any particular business, it does come down to the simple fact that you have to buy them, okay? You have to allocate a budget to buy customers. The price which you are paying for customers, because if, if I use my definition of marketing, my definition of marketing is the buying of lifetime customers, the buying of lifetime customers, meaning that you've got to invest money to purchase a customer but you don't just want to purchase the customer, you want to actually purchase a lifetime customer, someone that will keep coming back over and over and over again. So that, that first concept that we have to understand if we want more business is, are you actually investing money to buy customers? If you're not investing money to buy customers, 
and the money can sometimes be in wages, meaning people that you pay to actually do the marketing for you, people that will do your social media or do your blogs or those sorts of things. Um, and then the second point is that uh, you know if you, the, the money can be into the advertising side of it. So it can be either advertising or wages, but you're going to have to invest money to buy customers. And I think that too many businesses, and, and I can't get into specific strategies around any particular business unless I know the actual business and this question was asked uh, prior to coming on. So um, ultimately, the biggest thing I can say is the return on investment of marketing is the number one biggest uh, return that you should be getting in any particular business. Buying a customer that you then get a lifetime value out of. So let's imagine you're buying customers and let's imagine you, it cost you $100 to buy a customer. Every new customer that came in cost $100, um, you know, and hey presto, what can we do? Well, you buy a customer for $100. If they over their lifetime of buying from you spend $2,000 and you make, you know, 500 in profit, then it's $100 out for $500 back. That is a great investment, and that's what my book, Buying Customers, is all about, really understanding that whole process. Um, remember my teaching around discounting. We never discount. Why? We always should add value. Discounting uh, ruins a business. Discounting ruins companies. Redu reduction in prices is the fastest way to ruin companies. We, as business people, should learn to add value. We give away something that is valued at X rather than something that is uh, taking cash out. If, let's say, someone was buying a, let's say you're buying a suit, right? You go and buy a men's suit, and let's say it's a $1,000 suit. If I give you 10% off, I've just given away $100. What if I give you a shirt worth $100 that cost me 30 you understand that's sort of the thinking. Always add value rather than discount. Discounting kills companies. You know, raising prices is actually the, one of the biggest strategies that I do when I first start coaching companies. If you go in and raise all of your prices 10% across the board, less than 10% of your customers will ever even notice. Less than 10% of your customers would ever notice a 10% price rise. But that 10% price rise, what it adds to the bottom line of your business is phenomenal. And so, yeah, getting away from discounting to adding value, um, enticing a customer back is often as simple as just writing them a thank you note. I remember when I first moved here to Vegas, I became the best customer at uh, Nine Steakhouse because my waiter, after my first experience there, my waiter actually, his name was Phil, uh, I you ended up nicknaming him Lucky Phil because uh, I became their best customer. He was my waiter every single time. He opened his own restaurant based purely on the tips I gave him over a two-year period because I know how much I spent there and I know how much money he made from my tips. So you, you start thinking about uh, you know, just thanking them for coming in and asking them back. You, you often don't even have to make an offer to entice them back. Although there is that great story told by... Um, Oh, one of the restaurant gurus about, you know, giving people a, a, a different colored napkin the first four times they come in. So, you know, if they're the first, second, third or fourth visit type thing and making a new offer. Once you've because a customer is someone who is accustomed to doing business with you. All right. We are coming to the end of our time together today. So what is your biggest lesson of the day? Please type in your biggest lesson of the day. What is your number one lesson? Anyway, take care. The more you learn, the more you earn. 